In section 9.4, we're looking at ellipses. So we've looked at parabolas, now circles, and our next conic section is the ellipse. If we take an ellipse, we're not going to identify that as an oval, but it's a case where we take a circle and we now stretch it out in one direction. The one we have on the left is the horizontal major axis ellipse, where notice we've stretched it along in the x-axis. And on the right, we have the vertical major axis. This is where we've stretched it in the vertical y direction. In both of them, we're going to have the same basic equation, which is that x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. But notice in the one on the left, we've signified that, that's, that it's going to be this one when a is greater than b. And on the one on the right is when b is greater than a. So we can remember these by looking at we're going to stretch out in the direction of the denominator that's under the, under the value. So if a is bigger, it's going to stretch out in the x direction. If b is bigger, it's going to stretch out in the y direction. Now we have some other parts here we can identify. So looking at the one on the left, if we start with our vertices, and these are main vertices, it's going to be a and negative a. So from our origin, we're going to go to the right and left, the a amount, which we have in that ax squared over a squared. Our co-vertices are where we're going to go vertically, so that's our a and our b. They're not our main vertices, they're not the direction that we're stretching, but we still need them to help us graph. And then the third ones we have are our foci, or so the focus is the individual, but we have two of those. And that's going to be that c value. Now these are going to be reference points we're going to see later on that help us to create the ellipse and actually use it for the definition. And we're going to find the foci, and that's two focuses, by doing c squared equals a squared minus b squared. And this is where we take those a and b values, we square them, find the difference, and we use that to find c squared. We're going to see that later on as well. Now if we go to the vertical major axis, where when we stretch in the y direction, we have our vertices are now the b values, because that's the main direction we've stretched. Our co-vertices become the a values, and our focus, or our foci, are the same as before. It's the c values. Now just notice this time, though, they're going in the y direction. So we can look from the beginning of our equation and know pretty much which direction it's going to go. Larger denominator under x, we're going to go horizontally. Larger denominator under y, we're going to go vertically. And from there, we just need to find our reference points, and we can start to sketch our ellipse. So that's what we're going to look at. So we start with um, our equation, x squared over 16 plus y squared over 9 equals 1. And to graph it, we mention the important points that we need. We need the vertices, co-vertices, and the foci. So I can see here that a squared is 16 and a is 4. b squared is 9, which means b is 3. So since a is greater than b, I know that the ellipse is going to stretch in the horizontal direction. So that at least gives me a reference, something to idea what I should be looking for. So I know I'm going to have that vertices are going to go out in the x direction, really plus and minus 4. My co-vertices are going to go in the y direction, up and down 3, so on the right, plus or minus 3. So let's start to graph that and see what we actually have here. So let's get some axes here. So we have our vertices are at 4, negative 4, and then we go 3, negative 3. And we can see this is like a circle that's been stretched out. Now the last thing we need are our foci. And we're going to get those from c squared equals a squared minus b squared. So I have my a value, really my a squared value is 16, my b squared is 9, the difference in that is 7, so I get that c equals 7. So that tells me my foci are at the coordinates plus or minus, actually c should be square root of 7, plus or minus the square root of 7. Now, square root of 7, well, let's think. Square root of 4 is 2. Square root of 9 is 3. So we know it's between 2 and 3, so we can just approximate on our graph. And there's our foci. And now we can sketch in 
change pens here. We can sketch in the ellipse as best we can, hitting our vertices and our co-vertices, having our foci on the inside. Remember, the foci will always be on the axis that is stretched longer. Okay, we go to our second one. Change colors here. So now I can look at it and see, get a little used to the pattern. A value is now 6, B value is now 7. So since B is bigger than A, I have the idea that this ellipse will be stretched in the vertical direction. So my vertices this time will be the ones that stretches the longer direction. So it'll be 0 plus or minus 7. My co-vertices are going to be plus or minus 6. Now you may have noticed here that your vertices will always be a larger number. It'll always be further away from the origin than your co-vertices. And we want that. Always make sure the vert vertices are further away. Uh, let's get our foci. So it's going to be c squared equals. Now I could do a squared minus b squared, but really it's, I just want the difference. I want them squared. So I'm not too much worried about um, that order. I just want to write 7 squared minus 6 squared. I get c squared equals 49 minus 36. We get that c squared is 13, so c is the square root of 13. Now let's try to graph this. We're running out of space. We might just change our units. So what we'll do is we'll go each each uh, unit on the grid will be two units, and that'll help us fit it all in. So my main vertice is uh, 0, 7, and negative 7. My co-vertices are 3 and 3, oops, not 3 and 3, 6 and 6, so that's just 3 units. There we go. Uh, my foci, square root of 13, is between 3 and 4, so it would be about right here. And then we can sketch in our ellipse as best we can. Um, I would prefer on your homework, make sure you're labeling all of these points as you go around, your vertices, your co-vertices, and your foci. So make sure you are doing that. Okay, we're going to our next one. Now we... Uh, starts off a little bit different. Now you may have noticed in the equations we always have one as that constant and one on the other side. And we need to get it to that. So to do that I have to divide everything by 225. So I get 25 x squared over 225 plus 9 over y, 9 y squared over 225 and of course 225 over 225. Now 25 and 225 actually reduce to be x squared over 9. Uh, 9 and 225 reduce to be y squared over 25, and of course we have 1. So now we have it to that form we're familiar with. So, all right, we're looking for, before we get our vertices, let's think a and b. So a is 3, b is 5. So if we look, we're going to go stretched in the vertical direction. So that means our vertices come from B, which is 0, plus or minus 5. And our co-vertices come from A, so that's going to be along the x-axis, plus or minus 3, 0. So if we go to graph. Our main vertices are 5 along y, and our co-vertices are 3 along x. We can go in and trace in where the ellipse would go. Oops, let's try that again. And actually hit the points. And we look at it, and well, what are we missing? Well, hopefully you just said we're missing the foci, so we need to go back and find those. So we know A and B. A was 3, B was 5, so we're going to do C squared 
equals 5 squared minus 3 squared. C squared equals 25 minus 9. We get C squared equals 16. So it looks like C is going to be 4. Now we have to make sure we go in the correct direction. Uh, since our main axis is the vertical axis, we are going to go up and down. So our foci is at 0, plus or minus 4. In this case, it just happened to be just happen to be a whole number which works for us so make sure you plot your points you label them as you go around when you graph this on your own when you do your homework okay now let's change the order we were given this so now let's write an equation for an ellipse when we're given certain information and we need to build and take what we have and figure out where it fits so I know the vertex and covertex so the vertex is 7, 0, and the coved vertex is 0, 2. Now that's not, not both points, but we realize it's the opposite to negative 7, if it's positive 7. So 7, 0, that's telling me it's stretching more in the horizontal direction. So I'm stretching it out in the x direction. So I know A is 7, B is 2. So when it comes to writing the equation, I'm going to get x squared over 7 squared plus y squared over 2 squared equals 1. Now we simplify, we get x squared equals, or x squared over 49 plus y squared over 4 equals 1. And there's our equation. We could go through, we could uh, find the foci if needed, and we could uh, match our graph to it. But that's enough to get to the equation. So now we go to our next one. Our vertex now is six zero six, and our covertex is negative five zero. So by looking at just the y value, the zero six, that y value is six, and y we associate with b, and the x we associate with a. So we can automatically there see that our b value is six and our a value is five. So b is a little bit greater, so that's going to be stretching in the vertical direction this time. And we go to write our equation, we get x squared over, well, our a always matches up with x, so we're just going to make that 25, plus y squared over 36 equals 1, and we have our equation. Now be careful identifying which direction it is stretching, that way you make sure you label it, because when you give a vertex and covertex, you don't know if it's a or b, you need to determine which way it is stretching, which way it's further from the uh, origin, and that's going to tell you uh, A or B is going to be the vertex or covertex. Now, on to our last set here. We're given a little bit different order. We're given the focus and the vertex. So, vertex is 0, 8. If my main vertex is on the y-axis, that means I'm stretching vertically so that I know my B value is 8. Now, I need to find my A value. The A value is not the focus. The focus we've actually talked about is that C squared equals, in this case, since B is bigger, B squared minus A squared. So C squared is 3, or C is negative 3. Squaring that, it's going to be 9. B squared be 64 minus A squared. I'm going to subtract 64, I get negative 55 equals negative a squared, which is a squared equals 55. Therefore, we get that a is the square root of 55. Now, it is a radical, and that's perfectly fine. It just means we can write our equation now. x squared over, now it's going to be a squared, so that's just going to be 55 plus y squared over b squared was 8, or b was 8, so b squared 64 equals 1. Okay, on our last one here, again, I am given the vertex and the focus. If we look here, our vertex is negative 5, 0, so right off the bat, I know that a is 5. I'm going to have to use what I know about the focus, To let me find uh, my covertex or my b value. So 3 squared equals 5 squared minus b squared. 
if we get 9 equals 25 minus b squared, negative 16 equals negative b squared, we get b squared equals 16, and finally b equals 4. So it's going to be x squared over a squared, a was 5, so that's 25, y squared over 4 squared, which is 16 equals 1, and we have our equation.